As an entry-level security analyst, one of your many roles will be to handle an organization's digital and physical assets. As a reminder, an asset is an item perceived as having value to an organization. During their lifespan, organizations acquire all types of assets, including physical office spaces, computers, customers' PII, intellectual property, such as patents or copyrighted data, and so much more. Unfortunately, organizations operate in an environment that presents multiple security threats, risks, and vulnerabilities to their assets. Let's review what threats, risks, and vulnerabilities are and discuss some common examples of each. A threat is any circumstance or event that can negatively impact assets. One example of a threat is a social engineering attack. Social engineering is a manipulation technique that exploits human error to gain private information, access, or valuables. Malicious links in email messages that look like they're from legitimate companies or people is one method of social engineering known as phishing. As a reminder, phishing is a technique that is used to acquire sensitive data, such as usernames, passwords, or banking information. Risks are different from threats. A risk is anything that can impact the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of an asset. Think of a risk as the likelihood of a threat occurring. An example of a risk to an organization might be the lack of backup protocols for making sure its stored information can be recovered in the event of an accident or security incident. Organizations tend to rate risks at different levels, low, medium, and high, depending on possible threats and the value of an asset. A low risk asset is information that would not harm the organization's reputation or ongoing operations and would not cause financial damage if compromised. This includes public information such as website content or published research data. A medium risk asset might include information that's not available to the public and may cause some damage to the organization's finances reputation, or ongoing operations. For example, the early release of a company's quarterly earnings could impact the value of their stock. A high-risk asset is any information protected by regulations or laws, which, if compromised, would have a severe negative impact on an organization's finances, ongoing operations, or reputation. This could include leaked assets with SPII, PII, or intellectual property. Now, let's discuss vulnerabilities. A vulnerability is a weakness that can be exploited by a threat. And it's worth noting that both a vulnerability and threat must be present for there to be a risk. Examples of vulnerabilities include an outdated firewall, software or application, weak passwords, or unprotected confidential data. People can also be considered a vulnerability. People's actions can significantly affect an organization's internal network. Whether it's a client, external vendor, or employee, maintaining security must be a united effort. So entry-level analysts need to educate and empower people to be more security conscious. For example, educating people on how to identify a phishing email is a great starting point using access cards to grant employee access to physical spaces while restricting outside visitors is another good security measure. Organizations must continually improve their efforts when it comes to identifying and mitigating vulnerabilities to minimize threats and risks. Entry-level analysts can support this goal by encouraging employees to report suspicious activity and actively monitoring and documenting employees' access to critical assets. Now that you're familiar with some of the threats, risks, and vulnerabilities analysts frequently encounter, coming up, we'll discuss how they impact business operations. In this video, we'll discuss an expensive type of malware called ransomware. Then we'll cover three key impacts of threats, risks, and vulnerabilities on organizational operations. Ransomware is a malicious attack where threat actors encrypt an organization's data, then demand payment to restore access. Once ransomware is deployed by an attacker, 
It can freeze network systems, leave devices unusable, and encrypt or lock confidential data, making devices inaccessible. The threat actor then demands a ransom before providing a decryption key to allow organizations to return to their normal business operations. Think of a decryption key as a password provided to regain access to your data. Note that when ransom negotiations occur or data is leaked by threat actors, these events can occur through the dark web. While many people use search engines to navigate to their social media accounts or to shop online, this is only a small part of what the web really is. The web is actually an interlinked network of online content that's made up of three layers, the surface web, the deep web, and the dark web. The surface web is the layer that most people use. It contains content that can be accessed using a web browser. The deep web generally requires authorization to access it. An organization's intranet is an example of the deep web since it can only be accessed by employees or others who have been granted access. Lastly, the dark web can only be accessed by using special software. The dark web generally carries a negative connotation since it is the preferred web layer for criminals because of the secrecy that it provides. Now, let's discuss three key impacts of threats, risks, and vulnerabilities. The first impact we'll discuss is financial impact. When an organization's assets are compromised by an attack, such as the use of malware, the financial consequences can be significant for a variety of reasons. These can include interrupted production and services, the cost to correct the issue, and fines if assets are compromised because of non-compliance with laws and regulations. The second impact is identity theft. Organizations must decide whether to store private customer, employee, and outside vendor data, and for how long. Storing any type of sensitive data presents a risk to the organization. Sensitive data can include personally identifiable information, or PII, which can be sold or leaked through the dark web. That's because the dark web provides a sense of secrecy and threat actors may have the ability to sell data there without facing legal consequences. The last impact we'll discuss is damage to an organization's reputation. A solid customer base supports an organization's mission, vision, and financial goals. An exploited vulnerability can lead customers to seek new business relationships with competitors or create bad press that causes permanent damage to an organization's reputation. The loss of customer data doesn't only affect an organization's reputation and financials, it may also result in legal penalties and fines. Organizations are strongly encouraged to take proper security measures and follow certain protocols to prevent the significant impact of threats, risks, and vulnerabilities. By using all the tools in their toolkit, security teams are better prepared to handle an event such as a ransomware attack. Coming up, we'll cover the NIST Risk Management Framework's seven steps for managing risk. As you might remember from earlier in the program, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, provides many frameworks that are used by security professionals to manage risks, threats, and vulnerabilities. In this video, we're going to focus on NIST's Risk Management Framework, or RMF. As an entry-level analyst, you may not engage in all of these steps, but it's important to be familiar with this framework. Having a solid foundational understanding of how to mitigate and manage risks can set yourself apart from other candidates as you begin your job search in the field of security. There are seven steps in the RMF. Prepare, categorize, select, implement, assess, authorize, and monitor. Let's start with step one, prepare. 
Prepare refers to activities that are necessary to manage security and privacy risks before a breach occurs. As an entry-level analyst, you'll likely use this step to monitor for risks and identify controls that can be used to reduce those risks. Step two is categorize, which is used to develop risk management processes and tasks. Security professionals then use those processes and develop tasks by thinking about how the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of systems and information can be impacted by risk. As an entry-level analyst, you'll need to be able to understand how to follow the processes established by your organization to reduce risks to critical assets, such as private customer information. Step three is select. Select means to choose, customize, and capture documentation of the controls that protect an organization. An example of the select step would be keeping a playbook up to date or helping to manage other documentation that allows you and your team to address issues more efficiently. Step four is to implement security and privacy plans for the organization. Having good plans in place is essential for minimizing the impact of ongoing security risks. For example, if you notice a pattern of employees constantly needing password resets, implementing a change to password requirements may help solve this issue. Step five is assess. Assess means to determine if established controls are implemented correctly. An organization always wants to operate as efficiently as possible. So it's essential to take the time to analyze whether the implemented protocols procedures, and controls that are in place are meeting organizational needs. During this step, analysts identify potential weaknesses and determine whether the organization's tools, procedures, controls, and protocols should be changed to better manage potential risks. Step six is authorize. Authorize means being accountable for the security and privacy risks that may exist in an organization. As an analyst, the authorization step could involve generating reports, developing plans of action, and establishing project milestones that are aligned to your organization's security goals. Step seven is monitor. Monitor means to be aware of how systems are operating. Assessing and maintaining technical operations are tasks that analysts complete daily. Part of maintaining a low level of risk for an organization is knowing how the current systems support the organization's security goals. If the systems in place don't meet those goals, changes may be needed. Although it may not be your job to establish these procedures, you will need to make sure their working is intended so that risks to the organization itself and the people it serves are minimized.